I know, last week it sounded like a... Last week it was pathetic. <laughs> screaming, sounding... Oh, not just once, but both times. It sounded like somebody on, like, helium. Here's your lessons, kids. Don't try to give a cool metal scream when your sinuses are messed up. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Because you'll sound like a, like a screeching cat on helium. Anyways... I got Kyle Bush, and Bush, you better win for me this week, because you've been winning for Tim. Kyle, you don't, you don't win for Rose. Just remember, you got next week to win again. No, so me. You win for me. Back-to-back -back weeks, Bush. Come on. No, me and Kyle are buddies now. He waits for me, because that's the only really true victory I can get, apparently, that gets me a win. <laughs> well, you got Kurt Bush this week, so I got Kyle this week, so. Oh, Kurt Bush. Yep. Okay. Ah, well, well let's get. No waiting till next week. Let's get to the data. Data. Oh, data. Well, like we reported uh, last week, Trey Burke is entering the NBA draft, but now joining yeah. joining him is Tim Hardaway Jr. I gotta admit, I didn't see this one coming. So, neither did I. I don't think it was a smart. Yeah, he's what? He's uh, what is he this year? I believe junior? he. I think he was a so so sophomore. I believe because I think they said next year would have been his junior year. So he's skipping out on his senior year. Yep. Um, he's a good ball player. Didn't have a great performance in the playoffs. But who knows? We'll we'll keep track of our Michigan boys and see where they end up in the draft. Um, yep. I don't know. I don't think. He'll be as good as his dad, of course, in the NBA. But no, we'll I, see what happens. I think he should have sat or uh, played another year of college ball. I would have liked to see him stick around another year, but you know, I mean, I'm a Michigan fan, so of course I'm gonna want him to stick around another year. Yep. But you watch and see. You know, this is gonna have the doubters out now. The skepticists are all gonna be saying, "Oh, Michigan's lost two of their key players. They're not gonna be any good next year." Well, just let's not forget. We have a great bench, and we got some great kids coming into the program. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried about it at all. Uh, let's see. Uh, but I do have good news for you Michigan basketball fans. Glenn Robinson the third, and uh, Michigan center Mitch McGarry both decided Thursday to return to Michigan for their sophomore years instead of heading pro. So... That, that is good news for you, Michigan fans. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, well, as many of you heard, uh, I posted this up on the blog, but um, there will be not one Winter Classic game, but I believe six Winter Classic. Six, yes. You know, we're doing it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to. I don't have that up. Really. Is it going to be Winter Classic one, two, three, four, five, and six? Well, the first one is going to be in Ann Arbor, I know, and the other ones. And if you miss that one, hey, there's five more you can go to. Yes. The the reason I don't think this is a good idea is I think it's going to take away from the Winter Classic. It was always a really cool event that one city had, and it brought in a lot of revenue. Well, now if you bring in uh, ding, 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 you just hit the key button right there. Revenue. Repeat that last sentence you just said. Revenue? There you go. It's all about the revenue. Yes, that's cash for you. People. Yes, it is. Uh, here they are. January 1st, it will be Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Detroit Red Wings at Michigan Stadium. January 25th, Anaheim versus L.A. Dodger Stadium. January 26th, New Jersey versus the New York Rangers Yankee Stadium. January 29th, New York Islanders versus the New York Rangers, Yankee Stadium. March 1st, Pittsburgh versus Chicago, Shoulder, Shoulder, Shoulder Field. Soldier Field. Thank you, I can't talk. March 2nd, Ottawa versus Vancouver, BC Place. Um, not a good idea, though. Not a good idea. Um, is this really going to take away from the... Um, the hype of the game and 
I don't think it's going to bring in as much revenue as uh, the NHL is thinking. So. Well, I mean, it might bring in some decent money because of just where they're, how they're doing it. You know, before it was just like the Red Wings and one other team. Now they're branching out to a bunch of other teams in a bunch of other cities. So, I mean, in a sense, yeah, the nostalgia of it and the purpose of it, it kind of takes away from it. But the money and the revenue of it, they're probably going to come out pretty good on it, at least that first year. Um, yeah, well, and, and more exciting news for Madden fans, Madden NFL, uh, the video game. Barry Sanders is leading the polls, I guess, for the cover of uh, Madden 25. It's the 25th anniversary of Madden football. Um, so... Uh, he's you know, the, uh, the uh, 25th anniversary of that game kind, kind, kind of comes with uh, sad news as well with the passing of uh, Pat Summerall, which was Madden's longtime partner. Yep. Because um, I, I don't know what their plans are, if they're going to have like all the classic games rolled into this game as well this year. I mean, that's such a nostalgic uh, year for it, but... Yeah, so that kind of puts a damper on the game a little bit, but that's kind of cool that he's leading the polls for that. Yeah, uh, I think it would be the first time ever uh, uh, two players from the same uh, t same team uh, would be back to back cover. So two two players from the Lions, and of all wow. out of out of all players, the Lions. So. Um, and Montreal forward Ryan Wheat has been suspended for five games without pay for an illegal check to the head of Philadelphia Flyers defenseman Kent Hushkins during NHL's uh, game. So, uh, let's see. So this could really, in a sense, not to you know, downsize what you were just talking about. We've, we've had this discussion before. This could put a this could change the whole Madden curse a little bit. Yep. Because, I mean, Barry Sanders doesn't play anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, um, oh, what, what did, uh, what's his name? Why is his name? Last year's dude. Calvin Johnson. Thank you. Did anything really happen to him? Nope. Nope. Uh, the, I, I was hearing some people say that the the reason the 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 Lions didn't have a very good year was because of the Madden curse, but oh whatever the Lions never have a very good year. <laughs> that was my thing. I'm like, come on, it's the Lions. They had one good year. You don't expect them to be every year in the playoffs. Um, so I don't think that was related. But no, he didn't uh, have anything really. Um, my thought on this is like, well, you know. A curse can't really harm the Lions because, you know, they're not really all that great anyway, so we'll just keep putting Lions players on the cover. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll quick do a little research here and see if it... Oh, um, is there any other... Who are the other contenders for the cover right now? Are they, they all former players or are some of these guys still playing right no, now? No, they're, they're, they were trying to do more... Uh, they're dealing with a more nostalgic flashback type thing this year? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Quick look this up. Uh, it was, I think it's Adrian Peterson they were looking at. Uh, okay. But they were trying to do more classic players like Barry Sanders, uh, Jerry Rice. Um, real quick here. Cover athlete Detroit Lions wide receiver Kelvin Johnson is on the cover. Uh, but Madden 13 also features Ray Lewis during the introduction sequence giving a speech in a locker room. However, on October 14th against Dallas Cowboys, Lewis suffered a torn tricep. On January 2nd, 2013, Lewis stated that he would retire after the 2012-2013 NFL players. Lewis's uh, Baltimore Ravens went on to win the Super Bowl that season. Johnson has been injured, reportedly suffered nerve damage in his hand as well as a concussion reportedly, but has not missed any game time. Johnson was not affected by the Madden curse as Johnson broke Jerry Rice's single season receiving record 
of 1,848 yards and many other records as held. He ended the season 36 yards shy of being the first receiver ever to have 2,000 yards receiving. <laughs> so, so congratulations, Lions, on one of your first big victories ever. You beat the Madden curse. <laughs> yes. Well, there you go. So uh, he didn't really have anything. It sounds, I mean, but uh, they say something more about Ray Lewis. You know, he suffered the, uh, what, the torn tricep. But come on, the guy went on to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's not a curse. It'll be it'll be interesting to see what the uh, what the Madden game comes up with this year. I know I've had uh, I've had a few discussions with uh, our other co-host Chris Bull about the uh, NCAA uh, football coming out this year, and and I've got him drooling over that already. So. Well, isn't it's that? Be see what they do with Madden this year. Isn't our boy Denard on the cover this year? Denard's on the cover of that one, so. Not only, you know, we got, so basically we're going to have uh, Michigan guys, not, I'm not saying Michigan school, for, well, for, for the uh, NCAA game, it's Michigan school and the state of Michigan, but we got two state of Michigan people representing the covers this year. Yep. So that's kind of neat, all on its own. Yep, exactly. So, well, what else, what you got, Tim? Still in the uh, in the football vein here. Um, the football schedules. Some of the football schedules were released today. I'm punching up the uh, info on that as we speak. Um, the 2013 Monday Night Football schedule will kick off with a double header featuring um, East rivals Philadelphia and Washington for the first game. Houston at San Diego in the late game. And the games will all start at 8.30 this year, unless otherwise noted. That's what the opening game looks like for uh, this year. Uh, let's see what else they got on here. Well, they have the whole schedule posted, so uh, Lions get a Monday night game again this year, believe it or not. Hmm. Ravens at Lions, that'll be on uh, December 16th. That's a Monday night game. Uh, so they got one Monday night game this year. I think it's interesting that um, the Eagles get the first game, one of the first games of the year, being that they're going to have a, a whole new coaching staff and everything. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what the schedule looks like. You can go to uh, ESPN.com to see the full... Monday night schedule, and uh, what else do I have here? So the defending uh, champs, the Ravens, will be opening up at, their opening game will be, Ravens open at the Broncos. Interesting. So what that means. Hmm. Brother versus brother. That would be interesting. Manning's up against each other again. <laughs> okay, what else did I have here? I had... Oh, here's a, here's one. This is some uh, NBA news. Um, Cleveland Cavaliers, who recently let go of uh, Ryan Scott as their coach, are in negotiations with their former coach, Mike Brown. <laughs> so they're... So, you know, originally they let go of Mike Brown to hire Byron Scott, if I remember correctly. Byron Scott had a pretty lousy season, a couple of seasons with him, unfortunately. So now they're talking about hiring uh, Brown back again. Huh. However, um, Brown's a little, you know beat up and kind of a little still a uh, little sore over the whole L.A. incident because he was the coach there, you know, and they yeah. didn't let him go very long. So he's he's weighing his options. He hasn't committed to anything yet. And let's see. So that's Cavalier News. Um, Derek Jeter News here. Derek Jeter out until after spring. Uh, let's see. Captain Derek Jeter has been diagnosed with a small crack in his surgically repaired left ankle. Uh-oh. 
Bogdan will keep him sidelined until after the All-Star break. So Ooh. He's going to miss a lot of time. There. And, um... Well, let's face it, the Yankees are kind of getting a little old. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we got any games going on right now? And that's all I have for the moment. Well, wrestling talk here. We Tim and I, you know, so we're wrestling dorks, and you often think about what would your finishing move be if you were a professional wrestler? So that's our question tonight is what would your finishing move be if you were a pro wrestler? And I I, I can't limit it to just one. So I have it broken down to five moves. First wow. move first move and I thought of this move before Sheamus was using it, the bro kick. I always thought that'd be a really cool move to to bicycle kick somebody really hard like Sheamus does. Uh, the the spear or the gore that just would be awesome just to hit somebody so hard in the gut that you know knocks them out. Uh, boy, let's see. Uh, probably uh, the F five. Got to get a submission move in there, so I would probably use the STF. And then my last one, uh, I'd have to do some sort of high risk maneuver, uh, probably like uh, like Jeff Hardy's uh, uh, Swanton Bomb. <laughs> I could see you doing that. Yeah, you know me. Flying action for you. Heck yeah. What would yours be, Tim? Well, you know, I just like some good old fashioned kick buttness. I, I, I could be, you know, make people cringe. I'm a bigger guy, so I, I go more in the violent vein. I, of course, like the the uh, the gore. <laughs> or the, yeah, that was one of my favorites. I like that one. Uh, just you know, just slamming into somebody and taking them out. That's a pretty cool way to do things. Being a Triple H fan, you know, the pedigree I'd have to throw in there. And again. Just like Rose, I can't, I can't keep it down to just one. Um, I can even go with a good old fashioned, uh, good old fashioned. One time, man. <laughs> I kind of like his single punch action there. It's kind of, it's kind of neat. It's not, you know, nothing spectacular, but it's kind of cool. It's effective. Yes, it's effective. I like good old fashioned. Tombstone pile driver too. Ah uh, yes. Yes, that's a sweet, sweet move. I could see me using that. But one of my all-time favorite moves, and I remember you and I, we were actually talking to each other, watching this when he first introduced this. Chris Jericho's code breaker. When he came back to wrestling and he introduced a new move. Ah uh, yes. That was a freaking. Sweetest thing I had seen in a while. That's a wicked, wicked move. I like the code breaker. Good choice. Yes, yes indeed. Good. I remember how much you and I were just talking about that one, man. Yeah, the code breaker is a very good maneuver. I would, I do like that one too. Um, so yeah, those are those are some of the, I think some of the ones I would use. Yeah. Good choice. No high flying action for me. I see what happened to my buddy Will just coming off the second rope, so no <laughs> high flying action for me. No. <laughs> but uh boy. So well you got anything else, Tim, or Well no, not really. That's it for me. Yeah. It's a wet wet day, so Yes it is, so uh but Alright, well that's all we have this week. Normally we end things the way we end things. This week, it doesn't matter who me and Jamie are. We just want to say a special shout out to all the people of Boston, and especially those who lost their lives. Yes. Good night. Peace out. So, in honor of this and the traditional wrestling tribute, we'll give the uh, Ten Bell salute. So... Everybody have a great week, great weekend, and we'll see you on the recap show 
ending it with a little 10 bell salute for the people of Boston.